Mahadev, Mahadev. Can somebody help me with adjusting this mic a little bit? Reduce the volume just by a little bit. Mahadev, Mahadev. Thoda awaz kam karna hai. Mahadev, Mahadev. Mahadev, Mahadev. This is okay. Yes, this is okay. All of you to turn off the cell phones or put them on the vibration mode, please. Thank you. We will do the prayer of invocation, traditionally called as the Shanti part or the Mangala Charan followed by a little discussion before the meditation, some instructions for the meditation and some time for the meditation. <coughs> Somebody has a timer on their phone. Yes, Shri you put the timer. Some, just one person is required. I will tell you when and then we can go. So kindly follow this prayer of invocation and then some little discussion on the meditation. also in English will mean some form of prayer. God help me, you are great, so on and so forth is also some form of prayer. And therefore, also used to mean Samadhi. 
but when it comes to Sanskrit language and when it comes to the scriptures like Gita, Upanishad, Yoga Sutra, the word meditation is not there, we will have the word Samadhi. Okay? We will have the word Samadhi. So also you are going to find that words like Dhyanam, Dharana, Dhyan, Samadhi are used. And in English, all of these words will be translated as meditation. But in reality, these words have got different implications. Okay? They are different implications. So now, we have to see, follow the Yoga Sutra, which is the science of Samadhi, knowledge of Samadhi. So, up to the point that your body is stable and steady, where your attention is not drawn towards the body or any part of the body. Have you ever observed how much every day in 24 hours do you really become aware of the 32 teeth in your mouth? I have tooth. I have, a, I have teeth in my mouth. Do you? But the day there is a pain, a tooth pain, toothache, now, oh, the tooth, the tooth, the tooth. Whenever something is drawing attention more than required, that means there is a problem. When something draws the attention more than required, that means it is some problem. So also, if the body is constantly demanding attention, how am I looking? Is my hair, my hairstyle okay? Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. It means there is some complex. There is a complex. There is a problem. So the first thing to be done, noticed or understood is that one must sit wherein the attention consumed by the body is at the minimum ebb, lowest. So now that means that the body is comfortable and it does not require the unnecessary attention. If all your attention is consumed only by the body or about the body, where are you going to have the time, the energy to contemplate about something higher than the body? You see? And therefore, in the first place, when we begin the practice of meditation, I was just talking to Dr. Boya about this. When we talk about practice of meditation, Bhagavan Patanjali says that there is something called as Dridabhumika. Hmm? Nairantarya Satkara Sevito Dridabhumi. Nairantarya Satkara Sevito Dridabhumi. Satu Dirghakala Nairantarya Satkara Sevito Dridabhumi. This is the Sutra. It means that the practice of meditation when he is followed for very long time, Dirga Kal. Long time means don't say, oh, 15 minutes is sufficiently long. Okay? 
okay typically what we call as one tapa tapa in sanskrit is a period of time also period of time tapa also means austerity some vrata but it also means a period of time a period of 12 years is called as tapa okay a period of 12 years is called as tapa and this much time is good enough to create samskar drida samskar a firm samskar and this is the reason why kaikai had asked for 14 years of vanvasa for ram why did she not ask for 10 years 6 years huh 6 months one week why not because she knows that 12 years is a good time for people to forget ram the samskar which was left on ayodhya of ram can easily be washed away in period of 12 years plus 2 years of grace not taking chances <laughs> as much as it can wash away the sanskara a new sanskara also can be well established in a period of 12 years now if you want to find out just divide your age by 12 and you will find out how many tapas you have lived <laughs> and in this tapas what is it that has gone into your life for becoming your character what is it that you have really brought in for this 12 years in this number of tapas to be called as your can that can become your disposition character nature swabhav hmm? so here it is said by one of the modern authors commentators on yoga sutra that dirgha kala is a period of 10 years let us treat it one tapa 12 years he says if this practice of meditation is continued for 12 long years thrice a day morning afternoon and evening that is why we have three sandhyas you know one sandhya is where the day meets the night the other one is where the period of sandhya means the meeting point meeting period where the night meets meets the day and the the sandhya in the afternoon is where the day tra morning transforms into the noon or afternoon Okay. Yeah, that's why we have these three sandhyas. If the practice is continued for one hour in every sandhya, <laughs> you people are happy. <laughs> that is why I am saying that it requires commitment. <laughs> you know how easily we tick ourselves. Not for me. you see well, this is not for me whether you do or you don't do but at least aspire that maybe one day i should do this have shubha sankalpa for yourself you know our ancestors used to say whether you go to kashi or you don't go to kashi but at least say by your mouth that one day i will go to kashi so no harm but don't say with your own mouth that i will not go to kashi it's not possible even if you don't go it's okay but don't say it with your mouth i will not go like that whether you do or you don't do 
but don't say, oh, well, that is not possible for me. You say that one day maybe by the grace of God, something like this can become possible. Really. Keep a chance. Why obliterate every chance? So, Drida Bhumi. And how do you undertake that practice of meditation? He says, Nairantarya. Nairantarya means every day. Every day. Oh, but today I don't have any mood. Nobody, whether you have mood or no mood, stop being moody. Okay, stop being moody and get doing it. Go sit over there. Don't wait for your mind to cooperate. You start doing and the mind will cooperate. Therefore, it is Nairantarya. The second condition, he says, is Satkara Sevito, which means that the practice that you undertake, how should it be? <coughs> Take it with utmost respect. Respect what you are doing. Okay? Whatever little you are doing, do it with respect. Don't expect that others should, you know, recognize, mm, I am very spiritual. That is never going to happen. Others are going to call you that, you know, you are doing it only to show. Don't wait for any certificates from anyone. Don't wait for any endorsements from anyone. So the first thing is Dirgha Kaal, you know, and the Dirgha, I am really making it Dirgha. <laughs> Pronunciation of the Dirgha Kaal. Nairantarya, Satkara Sevito, Dridha Bhumi. Now you are on that ground which is firm. Now you have the foundation to take off. Whenever anything really powerful has to be launched like a rocket, it really requires a steady ground. When Ganga had to descend down, Bhagiratha prayed and Bhagiratha said that Ganga has to come down. Ganga said, how can I come down? Because if I descend down from this Vargaloka, to this Mrityu Loka. Yeah? Just by the sheer power of my descent, this Mrityu Loka will get shattered, will break into pieces. Yeah? How will I, how can I come down? You first show me a place where I can descend and which will be able to bear my, 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 the, the, the velocity with which I fall. Bhagiratha has no place, so he goes to Bhagavan Shankar and says, Prabhu, have mercy. And Shankar Bhagavan says, what is it that is the problem? Ganga says she will come down and she will break this earth into pieces. Uh, Bhagavan Shankar says, ask her to come down. And he opens his matted locks. Come on. And Ganga says, Shankar, you, you people are going to stop me? You don't know I'm Ganga. And she comes down running. And when she falls on the head of Bhagwan Shiva, he locks her up in his matted locks. And Ganga is not even able to move. She says, I'm sorry, sir. I was too, I was filled with vanity. But now you forgive me, Shiva. And then Bhagavan says, okay, now a small sprout can come down. And that's how Ganga comes to the Mrityu Loka. But what is to be remembered is, what is to be understood is that Dridha Bhumi, a solid, strong foundation is required. What you want is not something that is frail, fragile. A fact. This is truly creating a mind 
in which the sakshatkar of Parmeshwara can take place. Okay? You are creating that in which the darshan of the Lord can take place. <coughs> Drishyate tva graya buddhya sukshmaya sukshma darshyati Veda Shruti Upanishad says this buddhi is the place where the darshan of the Lord is going to take place. Manasaiva Manasaiva Nudrashtavya that it is through this mind, through this, through this buddhi alone, the vision of Parmeshwara has to be had. But the mind which will be able to behold the Lord, behold that Satyam, is a different mind. Its quality is altogether different. And therefore, when you want that, Creating a mind like this, cultivating it, is an enormous task. It will require bhagiratha prayatna. You know, in the Indian languages we have this word bhagiratha prayatna. You know what is that? To bring Ganga down to the earth, Three generations of people continuously gave all their lives doing that tapas to bring her down. Three generations or more, if I'm mistaken, not mistaken, but three definitely. Generally a person would give up easily. Not one, not two, the whole life is given. Not one generation, the second generation does that, the third generation does that. Then Ganga arrives. This is called as the Bhagiratha Prayatna. So also over here, no matter how much effort it is going to take, no matter how much energy it is going to consume, be prepared for it. And if you are not prepared to pay the price, that means you don't deserve it. या आलू प्याज खरीद में थोड़ी ही जा रहे हैं या कितने दिन करना पड़ेगा या भैया कितने का है प्याज at least in this place you don't do that मोल भाव you know in India we still do that fellow says दस रुपया then then the that person says the buyer that lady whosoever lady person दस रुपया आठ रुपये का then he says नहीं 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 बिल्जी नौ रुपया तो दे दो अरे आठ रुपया एक रुपया कम ज्यादा नहीं देंगे अच्छा ले लो सो सब मोल भाव इज टेकिंग प्लेस ये बारगेन है दिस इज नॉट अ बारगेन दिस इज नॉट अ बारगेन बी प्रिपेयर एंड द प्राइस दैट इज रिक्वायर्ड इज जस्ट दिस दीर्घ काल नैरंतर्य सत्कार आसे तो सत्कार का अर्थ होता है रिस्पेक्ट रेवरेंस Satkara sevito dhradakho mihe. Now, so now when you sit, have reverence. And therefore, even before you must have observed that a lot of people have this, before they climb the gas feet, or even when we sit for puja, etc., we, there is asana shuddhi, that you do namaskar to the prithvi. Pratvipayadatalokā devitvam vishnunātata vamchadhāraya mhe devi pavitrā pavitrañchāsanam kuru Hey Prathvi, make this āsana pavitra so that I can sit and perform the puja. Okay? Like that. So āsana is there, then pranayāma. Then comes pratyāhāra vidravala. And then comes dharana, dhana, samadhi. These are the three things. 
dharana means to hold the mind to lock the mind in one space in one place to lock it up this is called as dharana desha bandha chittasya dharana the definition is desha bandha chittasya dharana hmm? desha bandha means bandha means lock to arrest where it is the thought or attention arrested in one place where are you going to do that presently you can consider in the hridaya kamara in the lotus of the heart over here we are not going to say that some blood pumping thing is called as heart okay that muscle of heart we are going to say there is a lotus of heart in this center of heart let that attention be arrested dharana dhyanam dhyanam means hmm, tatra pratyaya ekata anata dhyanam i am giving all these definitions according to the yoga sutra i am not going anywhere not leading, leading you into anything else straight from the horse's mouth desha bandha chittasya dharana and then tatra pratyaya ekata anata dhyanam now over there in this lotus of heart let there be one thought thought in the sense of one nature thoughts could be several but it should be all of the same nature so when you are going to see bhagwan shiva or say om namah shivaya namah shivaya Namah Shiva. Suddenly, don't bring anything else. Oh, Namah Shiva is very boring. Let us do Dum Durga Yai Namah. Pratte Ekata Nata Bhyana. And then comes Samadhi. Okay. So now, I have explained you certain intricacies. Don't look. for the experiences look what you need to do and proceed ahead when you are going to look for experiences or oh, when we are going to sit we have to some special experience should come you are going to then mesmerize yourself then you are going to give auto suggestions and in auto suggestions the person is locked up in his own psychology the whole process over here is to set you free from psychology so that you discover your presence without the definitions provided by thought i am good i am bad i am beautiful i am ugly all these are the definitions created by your mind by your thought how are you without the thought defining you how you really are without the thought contaminating you to arrive at this to discover your presence untouched undefined uncontaminated by the thought is the goal of yoga abhyasa okay and when you find whatever you are without the thought defining you there is that total freedom you find that you are that pure consciousness untouched even by time space object anything something so pure tremendously holy
tremendously powerful that even time cannot destroy and time cannot do anything. That is what you are do that. And to arrive at it, be prepared. We have, I have, this is the little discussion. Sit, erect, with your hands or on the knees or locked up and thrown in front, whatever is good for you. The advantage of keeping the hands on the knees is that the shoulders remain stretched. Sometimes the shoulders collapse, making the chest collapse inside and then the, finally the impact is on the lungs, they shrink. So when you sit, sit as much steady as possible, steadily. Observe the breath to the point that it becomes relatively stable. The stability of the breath of the prana is seen against the length of the respiration and the, and the strength which is required to pull the breath in or release it. Slowly, the breath will become shallow. It will not happen in one day. It takes time. Be patient and kind to yourself. There is no hurry. There is no competition. There is nothing to prove to anyone. The breath will be felt within the nostrils, slightly over the upper lip. And when the movement of the breath is felt only over there in this region, nasa the breath has attained its stability. Then after, the thought has to become stable and the thought should fade in its background so much that there is awareness without any thought. Where the awareness alone remains without the thought, this stage is called as yoga samadhi. <coughs> so Ashima set it to 15 minutes and with that alarm we will I will chant home and then we will begin the discussion. <coughs> Presently Allow yourself this 15 minutes of your silent space, your sacred space.
डिफाइनिंग विवेक ही भगवान पतंजलि से द वर्ड विवेक ही मीन्स दी वन हु हैज विवेक विवेक इज द पावर ऑफ डिस्क्रिमिनेशन वर्ड विवेक comes from the verbal root vichir prathak karne to segregate prathak karna alag karna to segregate when you are able to see the distinction then the object is well comprehended when i am going to say the book it means it is not the cloth it means it is not the table it means it is not the mic it is not the table cloth anything the book is understood or you would understand this is the book that swami ji is talking about when you are clearly able to see the distinction between the clock table and the book isn't it so when i say the book it means it is not the clock when i say the book it means it is not the table thus this is the distinction the word that is being used is viveki so he does not have any confusion <laughs> two things are not mixed up mashed up but he is able to clearly see the distinction such a person is called as viveki the one who has vivek the quality of discrimination this discrimination is not what you know generally people talk about the racial discrimination in this and that okay this discrimination means to segregate and that segregation allows the intelligence to comprehend that is vivek bhagwan patanjali says sarvam dukham eva hi vivekinah who is a viveki a viveki is a person who sees all the objects over here everything fraught with dukham that it has the capacity to give dukham okay somebody says no no sir money has the capacity to give sukham right 
then you chase that money and in that chase of that money itself is dukkha or not so that money for which you are chasing what you are <coughs> you are chasing he is giving dukkha already even before it comes years ago when i was a younger mahatma sanyasi living in vrindavan so there were other boys who were almost my age in that place and so they used to find you know there is some mahatma swami ji of our age friend like we can talk and they used to often come to my room and to talk to me one day one fellow came you know perspiring and all that this chap want to talk to you very important thing i don't know what you have fallen in love with someone that is what you want to tell Swamiji, how do you do you read a mind? I said, what what can be more important than this for you? That the, there is going to be World War Three is going to be an important thing for you. And then he says, Swamiji, I have to tell you one thing, and that is, if I don't get married to this girl, I will die. I said, Ram. Fellow's name was Ram. I said, Ram, when did you see her, meet her? Swamiji, I have not yet met her. I only see her. I have not even spoken to her. But if I don't marry, I will die. Okay. When did you see her? Just this morning. <laughs> And I said, look here, not even twenty-four hour, hours. and you are ready to die <laughs> not even 24 hours if somebody is married for whatever 40 50 years and he says now i am fed up i want to commit suicide i understand <laughs> but this fellow is not only 24 hours he is ready to die but what's it now viveki is someone who sees the possibility of what what dukkha it can bring So Bhagwan Patanjali says, "Sarvam dukkhame vahi vivekina." As against Bhagwan Shri Krishna says, "Asho chyana vasho chastam prajna vadanch chabhasha se gata su na gata su unshche na nusho chanti pandita." According to Bhagwan Shri Krishna, who is a wise man? According to Bhagwan Patanjali, you have seen this. But according to Bhagwan Shri Krishna, he says, a wise man is he who does not come to grief, who does not grieve. therefore now we see that there are all these almost two opposing contradictory definitions one says sarvam dukkham eva hi vivekina and the shri krishna over here says that a learned person or a wise man is he who is not who does not grieve So, sir, that is what we are saying. That there are a lot of contradictions, and really speaking, this is not a contradiction. This is not a contradiction. Only when you know where the danger is, you will be able to save yourself from the danger, isn't it? If you do not know where is the pit. you will keep on walking and fall into the pit but if you know where the pit is you will avoid it and not only that you will avoid the pit but you will avoid the pain which will follow after falling into the pit thus a viveki is a person who knows 
how to negotiate his way in life and avoid to come viveki is not somebody who goes and hugs and then says why why is it troubling me you know during gurudev's time this event really took place in uttarkashi okay so there was this some sadhu i don't know if this is really or gurudev used to tell this story but the <laughs> this this there was this sadhu you know in uttarkashi it becomes very cold during the winter time so what would people do the sadhu is there how he he's already feeling cold now where to go so in general we all have one rule of the thumb and that is whatever you want and whatever you you go and tell ganga she will she will look after you that is what all the sadhus living by the ganga bank always say shankar ji ko batao ganga ji ko batao ye chalta hai so this fellow went to ganga ji and said i'm feeling cold give me a blanket give me a blanket then he sees one blanket coming down in the river this is my prayer is heard <laughs> and he jumps into the river that cold water and catches that blanket and the thing that happens is not that he caught the blanket the blanket also caught him because it was a bear which was <laughs> swimming in the water <laughs> black bear himalayan bear bhalu now he wants to be free <laughs> He said, "Leave me, leave me. The blanket says, 'No, I will not leave you.' I, I don't want blanket. Blanket says, 'But I want you now. You were just praying for me.' He said, 'A Vivek. You know, he does not go and hug the things which are going to give pain. He is able to negotiate his way in life in such a way that he avoids pain.'" that he is viveki and unless and until we have gone through this phase of initial vivek you cannot even arrive at that phase where you can listen to shri krishna because shri krishna's discourse begins exactly after arjuna has said that there is nothing in this world that can cure this samsara dukham <coughs> somebody says that well arjuna you should, if you win this war if you win this battle you will be celebrated people will celebrate you your victory they will call you great you will have all the pleasures all the respect all the power all the wealth kissing your feet arjuna says what are you talking about this battle or this small little kingdom of the uh, hastinapur i'm telling you even if somebody gives me the rajya of trilokya of all the three worlds the kingdom of three worlds yet that dukham cannot be wiped out and therefore now shri krishna you tell me that upaya that remedy which can remove dukha completely now you say and therefore having gone through the phase that bhagwan patanjali calls as vivek is phase only then can you arrive at the feet of shri krishna to listen to his discourse till then even if shri krishna spoke you are going to be deaf you cannot listen to that you can't hear because an unprepared person won't be won't become a proper receptacle and therefore this is not a contradiction but everything sits 
perfectly like a jigsaw puzzle. And in this, now you have understood, according to Shri Krishna, a wise man is he who is free from dukkham. Who is a wise man? Nanushochanti Pandita. The wise people are those who have found their freedom from dukkham. Not those people who are creating situations for dukkham. Creating conditions for dukkham. They are not wise. I will give you an example to understand this. Now somebody says, I, will, I, I, I feel very happy only when I eat mangoes. Therefore, bring me mangoes. Well, nobody desires you. You feel very happy after eating mangoes. Now he says, my happiness is limited to mangoes. Which means whenever there is no mango, I cannot be happy. Now who has created the condition for you to be unhappy? Who created this condition? And then this is what you call as your intelligence. That intelligence in which you think you are creating conditions for happiness, you really are creating conditions for unhappiness. Now you look, this is, this is the Viveka which is expected. Sir, how are you living your life? Are you creating happiness for yourself or are you creating only conditions for to come? And then, if, if a person has lived for long, whatever number of years he has lived, whether a person lives for 10 years, 20 years, 60 years, 100 years or 400 years is immaterial. But the fact that number of years that you have lived and if you have not found a way how to create your happiness or how to, how to negotiate your way through these problems, what have you really learned? What have you learned? You may have learned how to make more money. You may have learned how to prove yourself smarter than others. You may have learned how to, how to cheat others. But if you have not learned how to set yourself free from the come, what did you really learn? And therefore, he who has not learned this, understood this, he may, he may be a great pandit of all the other things, yet, in his own estimation, he will always remain zero. And therefore, such a person will always seek approval of others. Call me great, call me big, call me wonderful. Why? Because in his own vision, he is, he is small. Not there. And therefore, now with this Sri Krishna's definition, that a wise man is he who is free from the Now suddenly somebody comes and says, Sir, there cannot be such a person who is free from Dukkha. Everybody has Dukkha. Even Shri Krishna has Dukkha. Did Shri Krishna come and tell you that? <laughs> we are not talking about situations, circumstances. We are talking about Dukkha, which is your internal condition. Externally, you may be having several problems, yet you can remain untouched by that. Isn't it? So the Dukkham is not in circumstances. Circumstances can provoke or can, can instigate Dukkham, but circumstances are not Dukkham. I will give you an example from the Shastra. It so happened that you, we all know the story of from Ramayana, the whole episode, where on the day of his coronation, 
Bhagwan Ram was asked to go in exile by his father, Dashrata, on Kaikai's whatever. You all know. Now, just imagine that about to be coronated, about to be coronated the same morning when he goes to see his father in his chamber. <coughs> because in an hour's time now the whole entourage has to go to the court. People already are celebrating outside. <coughs> Songs are being sung. Music is being played. Sweets are getting distributed. And there is a whole atmosphere of celebration and gaiety outside. <coughs> And within the palace, when Rama goes to see Dashrata, Dashrata is lying on that floor. Kaika is sitting next to him. And Dashrata says that Ram, not your coronation. I have given promise to Kaikai that you will go to the forest in exile for 14 years. Okay? And when that was told to Rama, the book says that the word that they have used is Amlana Mukham Bujashri. <coughs> the glow on his face, Mukham Bujashri, the glow on Rama's face did not alter or did not lessen even this much, Amlan did not wither. The smile, the joy, the peace which was there on that face did not alter even this bit. And therefore, circumstances can be against you, but that does not mean that it will create to come. It means that there is freedom from Dukkha. And we are all seeking that freedom from Dukkha. If a person finds that there is no freedom from Dukkha at all, the person will not want to even live. You know, somebody who is standing over there on the bridge to commit suicide, uh, why do you want to, you know, I don't have any other chance, no opportunity, I have lost everything. I am going to die in debt. I cannot go out of this. The person here says, don't worry. I will give you money without any interest. And there is no condition when you can return. Take that and start your business over again. That person will jump not on the other side, on this side. <laughs> hey, why? Why were you ready to kill yourself and why are you now within that one second? What has changed? All that has changed is that earlier he was able, he was not able to see that there is any freedom from Dukkha. And now he knows that there is. And even when he wants to that commit the suicide also, he sees that ending the life is the only way to find the freedom from Dukkha. And therefore he wants to end the life. Look at that. The whole attempt, whether you are living or dying, you are living only to seek this freedom from Dukkha. And freedom from this Dukkha, absolute freedom from Dukkha, is what we call as moksha. Dukkhasyatyantika nivritti. Gaan. The Dukkha has... How that Atyantika nivritti can take place? Is it a state where there is no nothing? Paramasukhasya upalabdhi. Moksha, the word, has got both these meanings together. Where there is nivritti of Dukkha. And how is the nivritti? Nivritti means obliteration, annihilation, destruction 
freedom from dukkham how absolute freedom atyantika nivritti and then there is param sukhasya upalabdhi that sukham which is limitless that sukham which is limit because limited sukham means dukkham limited sukham itself is dukkham have you seen that that's why this you know these people are singing the songs that, you know this moment of our love should remain like this forever and before he says that the moment already has finished प्यार का ये पल अरे पल बोलते ही वो कहीं भाग भी गया पलायनम डन ऑलरेडी गॉन स्लिप्ट लिमिटेड सुखम इज दुखम देन व्हाट कैन बी कॉल्ड एज सुखम yat vai bhuma tat sukham that what is limitless that what is anantam that what is infinite is a sukham and yesterday when the count was given to you what was that manushananda and then manushya gandharvana ananda devarandharvana ananda पितृनाजानंद प्रजापतेरानंद बृहस्पतेरानंद हिण्यगर्भस्यानंदवन दट Ananda, Ananda which is 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 several times more even than this 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 attained by by whom? By this Now put the Upanishad and Gita together. Who is a wise man according to Shri Krishna? Of course the wise man is he who has sought the freedom from Dukkha. Who is that wise man who is free from Dukkha? he who has found that what is limitless who is the one who is brahma vidapno hoti param he who is a brahma jnani shrotriyasya cha kamatasya upanishad says that brahma jnani and therefore now we want to know who this brahma jnani is and why is he brahma jnani he who knows brahman is brahma jnani he who knows brahma is brahmanyati now we want to know what that brahma is so that so that what will happen by you being that brahmanyati you will be free from what is this brahma knowing which you become free from this dukkha because being in this world you are not in this world so that you are kept pushed insulted rejected all the time by this world you are in this world so that you can seek what is really to be sought and unless and until you really arrive to this conclusion that this is the true mission of your life till then a person will only be throwing darts in the dark doing only trial and errors may be this may be that may be this job may be that job may be this place may be that place and he keeps on going here and there and at the end gets nothing and therefore become aware as of what is truly wanted by you and that is called as vivek and therefore a viveki person is the one who now can go further and ask for that what is truly wanted by him so now 
we are going to see what is, what is that definition, by definition what is this Brahma Jnani. And then there is a very beautiful question that Arjuna has asked because the Brahma Jnani has been called by different names in Bhagavad Gita itself. In the second chapter Bhagavan calls him as Thita Prajna. In the fourteenth chapter he calls him as Gunatita. In the twelfth chapter he calls him as Bhakta. Okay? A devotee. Gunatita means the one who has gone beyond the Gunas attributes. Such a person. And Sthita Prajna means the one whose intelligence now has become steady. The prajna is steady. The knowledge is steady. Such a person is called as sthita prajna. A wise man. So here he is the, talking about brahma being the only one who is free from dukkham. Rest of them, even if he is an emperor, whether he is even Indra also, he will have his own share of dukkham. Do whatever that dukkham comes behind him. And therefore, now we want to know Kim Tad Brahma, what is this Brahma sir? Knowing which one becomes free, please tell us. Adhi Hitagavo Brahmeti, O Lord, please impart me the knowledge of Brahma. This is how the Upanishad begins. We will see more of it tomorrow. And tomorrow is the last day of this series. Okay? Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnaha Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Badarayanam Sutra Bhashakatau Vande Bhagavanta Puna Puna Ishwago Guru Atmeti Murti Bheda Vibhagine Vyoma Vyapta Dehaya Dakshina Murta Yenamaha